GM actually used just about all of the volts that they've built to this point. They lined them up in a garage with the full night's charge to be followed by a full day's drive. Now, before we get going, let's take a look inside. This is the main instrument panel. Let's freeze it here. I can explain what you're seeing. Now to the left, you see we've depleted the battery and have 223 miles left of extended range. We've used 6 tenths of a gallon of gas and averaged 71.6 miles per gallon. To the right, you want to keep that little green ball right in the center, and that way you have the most eco-friendly driving. Now let's look at a couple of things I didn't care for. These door panels. found out later they were an option, one you're probably not going to want to take and while these buttons look techy, they're hard to see from the driver's seat and not very intuitive. The center screen can be switched to give you different kinds of information. It can also run the very nice audio system and switch to navigation mode. We needed that because we had quite a trip ahead of us. Right now I'm spending time as a passenger in the Chevy Volt. Our day in the Volt includes driving through city roads, driving through country roads. We're in the Gross Points right now. Also getting a, a tour of the factory where the Volt is made. But of course, what everybody wants to know is about the driving experience, and I took turns driving with Justin Hyde from Jalopnik.com. Best way to talk about the feel is it's kind of like a slightly larger European compact. Very solid handling in sun and rain, the sound very quiet, especially in pure EV mode, and a very seamless transition when the range extender kicks in. And you can just barely... I can't tell. I can't, no, I don't think I can hear that. I heard the car next to me more than I could hear it switched on. Now there is a slightly different feel under range extender mode. The gasoline engine is mostly to provide electricity, so as it has to put out more volts for the volt, it has to rev harder, and that doesn't always coincide with your foot on the pedal, and that takes some getting used to. We also didn't get the world's best fuel economy under extended range mode in the 30s to the 50s according to the gauge we had on board. So Volt owners will probably want to keep it in EV mode as much as possible. By the way, during our brief factory stop, we did have a chance to plug it in. It's really no tougher than plugging in an appliance. And we found out you can't take it out of gear until that plug is unhooked. That way you don't pull the cord off in your garage. We had two hours of charge over lunch. That gave us nearly 30 miles of EV range. So bottom line negatives include some non-intuitive controls, not as good as expected fuel economy and extended range, and the overall expense of the Volt. Positives include the solid, real car feel, ability not to worry about range, and knowing that what you're driving may just be the car of the future. I'm Autobeat reporter Jeff Gilbert.